Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafont, your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And you know, I start my show up the same way, always with gratitude. I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be above ground. I'm thankful to be facing a handsome man that you see on my screen. <laughs> he closed his eyes as I said that. <laughs> and to be able to share with you another episode on Between the Lines, which is what we're all about, trying to impact at least one life, even if it's one person, anywhere in the world. That's what we are about because it's just one we need to touch and that one will touch another and have a rippling effect. So I am thankful to be here to still do what I'm doing and spread the love. I wanna tell you what we're talking about today. We're talking to Bob Waters and we're talking about how to land a royalty publisher without an agent. Okay, let me repeat that. How to land a royalty publisher without an agent. Let me tell you a bit about Bob. Bob also goes by the pen name R.J. Waters. We'll see his book a little bit later down in the episode. He is a retired law enforcement pro or professional who turned his practical experience into a remarkable book, Cold But Not Forgotten. And we'll feature that book a little bit later down a fast-paced small town police procedural with a remarkable cast of diverse and plausible suspects. The victim and outgoing wife of a local dentist was the most popular woman in town. So why was she murdered and who killed her anyway? So welcome Bob to Between the Lines. Thank you very much, I'm glad to be here. It's great to have you. I like how everything around you is blue. Blue is actually my favorite color. You're wearing a blue shirt, and then you have some other things behind you. I always notice blue. Blue is a, is a very attractive color to me. There are a lot of blue stuff, yes, behind you. Yes. They are uh, Keystone Cops that I've had uh, souvenir. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Big lamp and then the others, is the, they're all crammed in a, in a car must be a dozen of them in there and it actually is a whiskey bottle from years ago have you started drinking the whiskey no somebody beat me to it i found it in the store <laughs> <laughs> somebody beat you to it no no we yeah, it, was, it, was, it was sold as a souvenir not as a, a bottle of whiskey <laughs> <laughs> all right so tell us a bit about a law enforcement officer in, you know, in the US, I mean, that is an intriguing thing. I mean, when we, we look on TV, it's what we see, it seems glamorous. It's, it's like such a you know, status to attain to, and um, you know, it can be risky. But tell us a bit, just share with us a bit of your life as a cop, as they say, yeah? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, it is, uh, a lot of the story is based upon incidents I wasn't involved in or close to or heard about. Uh, uh, I started out writing the book uh, just as a collection of stories of, that I, after I retired, I bored everybody I knew, including my wife, was all the tales. We all have tales. And, uh, and then she says, why don't you uh, write them down? And I said, who cares? And she said, no, no, for the family, for history. So I did. And uh, they, uh, she looks at them and said, I was already retired. I retired from, uh, as a fraud investigator from the state of Nevada and we moved down here to Vegas. And she says, well, write a book. Look, you can write. Look at this. And I said, I can't do that. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, I was at that time writing or uh, volunteering with the Cancer Society to drive patients uh, to their treatment. And Vegas is a big wide valley. So nobody lived near where the treatment was. You go pick them up, take them across town. Uh, and I sit there one to three hours while they got their treatment and then take them back home. So during that time, uh, I would take out a laptop and I started 
putting those stories into uh, a book. And I quickly got rid of the stories and I just plowed into uh, my own fictionalized account and it just grew. It just went from scene to scene. And uh, so the first book uh, was, was done basically in the, in the front seat of a car to, for a lot, of t a lot of time. I did that about two years. Well, that's great because what it shows is that you can write anywhere at any time. Once you have time and space on your hand, you can push out a chapter or a couple of pages of a chapter or just document your thoughts and get back to it later on. So that's one of the, the, the things that I encourage and you're sharing here as a tip to persons who would like to write. And they say, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. You do have the time. Time is a resource that's available to anyone. It's just how you use the time. Because if you look back and audit, as I tell people, how you use your time for the day, you waste a lot of time. You waste a lot of time doing nonsense and you can be more productive with the way you use it. Yeah. Yes. So that's a, a wonderful tip for those who are aspiring to be authors, you know, or writers in some way or form. So you have gotten, I, I should, before I go into anything more, I should really say thanks to your wife for, for getting you started for writing the book. But if, if it, it was for your wife, you wouldn't be here talking to me. <laughs> it's her fault. It's her <laughs> I know yeah. men love to say that. And so you got the opportunity to say that. It's her fault. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, so, and I love her for it. You love her for it. <laughs> She said to me, uh, you, you've led such an interesting life between Vietnam and uh, being an EMT and a law enforcement. She, you know, write the, some of those down. Yeah. So that, that's what got me to do it. And uh, once I got beyond the old stuff and started creating my own story, yeah. uh, I just loved it. I, I'm hooked. That's, on, that's, <laughs> that's another tip as well. You know, sometimes we don't know what to do with our lives, but there are people who are in our lives that encourage us to do things. And at the moment, just like you, you resisted. And you're like, no, who's going to read it? Nobody will be interested. Nah, nah. And other people have the eyes to see the potential in you or they put something in your future that you are not seeing. And so there are people who are sitting around wondering, what am I going to do with my life? Nobody would care. Nobody this, nobody. And it takes other persons to tell you what you need to do. Because, you know, I believe in God and God sends people to, to guide you. If, you. if you are not able to do it yourself, he sends people to kind of just plant a little seed in your mind to say, hey, you know, I should do that. And it, it, it leaves you thinking. And here you are. You're hooked. It might be the one thing <laughs> that you resisted before that has you hooked, yeah? Yes. So that's another tip for aspiring authors. But we are focusing now on how you, let me remind myself, how you were able to land a publisher, a royalty publisher without an agent. Now for persons who don't know what a royalty publisher is, could you kindly explain to them? A royalty publisher is one who, uh, you don't pay for the printing. They do. They do okay. the edit. They do editing. They work back and forth with an editor, and uh, they give you a final proof. You prove it. They print the book, put it out in ebook and paperback. And uh, at the end of every quarter, you get uh, royalty, hopefully. And uh, that's basically what it amounts to. Uh, I, have, I spend no money on getting it printed. Uh, where self-publishing, you do. Yes. Well, you're so talking this, about a traditional publisher, so, but you call yeah. it a royalty publisher, a traditional publishing house. They upfront all the costs. All you need to do is write a book, make sure it's well written, and they will go it over and put out all the costs. And then well, how they get back their, their investment is they take the greater percentage of the royalties. Um, at the end with book sales. Yeah, but that's still a good deal if you don't have the resources to be able to put out for your, to publish your own book in self-publishing, yeah? 
Yes, I was very fortunate how that worked out. Yes, so tell us about getting, that. That's what I. That's what we want to know. Tell us about that. How did you land that royalty publisher? Because a lot of people want to get a really good uh, traditional publishing house to publish their book, but they're having a difficulty because normally it takes like two years and a half before they get back to you. Some of them they never get back to you at all. Yeah, I. Uh, I was joined the Henderson Writers Group down here and started uh, going, well, I went to their meetings, they do critiques and uh, went to a couple other, other groups and uh, kind of with assistance of others, uh, you kind of learn what's weak and what's strong. And so that improved my writing for my first book. The second one is Cold But Not Forgotten that uh, uh, perked up quite a bit. So uh, Anderson Group puts on the Las Vegas Writers Conference uh, every year. And so I started going to that. And uh, you have the opportunity to make a pitch to an editor or an agent uh, during the, the conference. You schedule and you go there and you you sit there and it, then they call you and you go to this little table and chair where the agent is and uh, some are friendly, some are kind of cold. You can tell they just as soon go to lunch and uh, but so they will uh, either no, I don't believe that would work for us or they'll say well send me a synopsis or give me a uh, couple of chapters. And that's when the weight comes in. You just don't uh, hear from them for a while. <laughs> and uh, if, if, if you do, it's like, well, sorry, thank you. And that's it. Well, this last conference I went to, which the third one I went to, uh, my wife always goes with me even though she does not write, but she's one heck of a resource for me. And uh, she's like my editor. And so we're at the conference and it's a uh, cocktail hour. Meetings are over, we're going to have cocktails and then they serve dinner. And so we were standing kind of by our table uh, and I got in a conversation with another author and she's behind me by our table and uh, Ellie Robertson from uh, the Wild Rose Press comes walking down the aisle and she sees my wife and walks up to her and says, and what do you write? And my wife, Penny, she says, I don't, but she reaches over and spins me around, but he does. And I like looked at her, she had her eyebrows up and think like, oh, what do you got? So I gave, the perfect pitch. Uh, when you go to the others, you get nervous. You're sitting there waiting for your them to call you, and then you kind of stutter, stammer. This was just absolutely perfect setup. Mm -hmm. I just spit it out word for word, and uh, she takes out her business card and says, "Send me your manuscript." And that was unbelievable. So I did, and. Uh, in a while, she wrote back and said, uh, I love your story, I love your voice, but I couldn't sell it to the committee. And uh, Wild Rose was focused uh, more on romance and uh, were branching out at that point, but this was a little far-fetched, I guess. It was uh, Area 51 here in Vegas with aliens and <laughs> that stuff. And she she said she liked it, but couldn't. they weren't going to go for it. So she said, but I like your voice. Send me uh, anything you have that gets mainstream, more mainstream. Well, I had finished Cold But Not Forgotten. So I sent it to her. And they bought into it. Uh, I got a contract and she and I worked out editing back and forth things. And 
last September it was published. Wow. And I the perfect setup. Uh, pardon? As you said, the perfect setup. I'm sorry. You said the perfect setup. I am still having trouble with that. Yeah, you said the perfect setup in terms of her oh. coming to you, yeah. <laughs> You could not program that. <laughs> that was strictly fate. Yes. And I'd say I attribute it to my wife. Yeah. Because she's she's a beautiful woman and a very friendly, outgoing type, the kind that you want to talk to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so Allie just went up to her, and as they all do, if <laughs> conversation wise, that's where they meet people at those conferences. And, so what do you write? And <laughs> it was, <laughs> I just felt this arm on me and spun me, spinning me around and, oh, hi. <laughs> and it went perfect. Yeah. Could I ever program it again? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was luck. But it's worked for me because she's, yeah. uh, she's got my, my next book. Mm -hmm. Uh and uh, we're working on that now. So I still still got the uh, Area 51 story all, all ready to go for the right person. Yes. <laughs> the thing about it is that you just need one door to open. Just one door to open and that oh. would be it. You don't need yeah, many doors, just one. More, yeah, more, uh, more and more of the... Uh, off the wall things are becoming popular in t these yeah. days. And mine isn't as far fetched as a lot of them. But it's you said something, you said something that I want writers to understand that it's not a matter of writing the manuscript or writing your book and expecting that somebody, a publisher, is going to just find you out of nowhere. You have to, you have to do something, you have to go out there. And while you knew you were not going to self-publish, you started attending writing groups and learning, learning the do's and the don'ts, networking, and you attended your local conference, you know, conferences that allowed you to be more exposed and inspired and to hear what other writers are doing and to hear what publishers are looking for. So there was some action on your part to land you in that position, at that space, at that point in time, to be met by that traditional publisher. If you yes. were not doing anything or not taking any form of action, you would not have been at the right place at the right time to get that opportunity. So oh. there are some writers who want a lot. I want to be a bestselling. I want to be a New York Times. I want to be an international, but I want to retire off the money of my book, yes big movie deal, everything, franchise, everything. And you're sitting home with it, expecting somebody to discover you. It doesn't work that way. You have to interact with the, the people in the industry. I remember years ago I attended, because I'm a publisher and I'm also an author. And I went all the way to Hollywood to attend a conference some years ago. And it was both a writer's and a screenwriter's conference. So I was mixing with writers from all over the world, as well as screenwriters for movies, movie stars, people were coming in there, Cinemax, all the big names, and it was held in Hollywood, Beverly Hills, you know, and you, you were able to meet the best of the best coming to this thing. You know, in one space, what, everybody converging in one space. It was a big eye opener for me, and it led me to know that I was on the right path, that what I was thinking, saying, doing, and helping my clients to do was on the right path. Yeah, so you have to really line up yourself. It doesn't even matter if you're an author, but whatever industry you're in, you have to align yourself with the people, with the audience, with the market, consumers, business, it doesn't matter, complimentary services, get out there and network. To position yourself you just never know who may tap you on the shoulder and spin you around like bob and say hey send me <laughs> send me your manuscript you just never know never never know 
So tell us what has the results been for you, Bob, since then? What have I done since then? No, what has been the results for you since publishing the book with the traditional publisher? What has your results look like? Your what? results. Your results? Oh, the results? Mm -hmm. um, well, you they have a place on their website where you can look and see uh, an idea of activity from the various uh, Amazon and other Barnes and Noble and various places like that. But you don't really know until the end of the quarter or the next quarter, really. Uh, they skip a quarter. To, but you don't really know how much you're doing until that check shows. And it, uh, you know, we've uh, got got publicity publicity team working with me, and which is that I pay for, mm -hmm. and we're getting uh, interviews and uh, speaking play in, well, speaking engagements and interviews, podcasts, and uh, kind of getting. Uh, getting around and this uh this is something that has to be uh promoted i mean uh, the company the publisher is not going to uh mm -hmm. do much yeah you have to do your uh, part you work with them and they'll you've got a promotion going you want to drop the price for 99 cents for an ebook for a week or two or you've got a concentrated promotion going on they're more than happy to do that. Mm -hmm. So that has uh, that has worked uh, in benefit, and uh, so we'll see uh, in the long run uh, how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, you have to do your part. It's your book. You have to do your part. But it it also has, especially when you're working with a traditional publisher, there are certain terms and agreements that you have to look very carefully at because they may not allow you to do certain things. It's like they have control of the book because remember they put out money initially to get the book done for you. So they have greater control. So they may not even allow you to publish anywhere else or to market the book. It's really up to them to do everything. So persons who are going into a book contract with a traditional publisher, I would say be very careful, read the fine, fine, fine print and make sure you know what you, what you want, you know, because you would lose control. And should you have any disagreement, they can just in a second take the book off online and you, you don't have anything. You know, that has happened to a couple of persons that I know where in, in, a, in a blink of an eye, their book was taken off online and they don't have anything, you know, and they have to start over from scratch, which is <clears throat> not a good position to be in, you know? <clears throat> yeah, not a good position. So Bob, what would you suggest? Because we're we are coming up to the end of the episode. I want to feature your book. Do you have a website that I can go to? Yes, I do. Tell me, uh, is it? My website uh, is. I have uh, Facebook uh, is uh, R R J Waters. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, R J Waters author. There's a there's a website is uh, I'm looking for rjwaters-author.com. Uh, so I've got uh, several places there. The Facebook is uh, R.J. Waters Books, and there's yeah. I'm seeing something coming up here. Yeah. All right, just give me a minute. Let me just share that here on the screen. So you would see it showing up here. Yeah, there you go. Yes. That's, that's... So you have two books, everybody had a hand in it. Well, clearly, 
his hand. Exactly the same story. <laughs> Everybody had it. Oh, it's the same story. Cold but not. Yeah, it's a. It split the cover in half. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Everybody had a hand in it, and clearly, it's a skeleton. That's really alarming. <laughs> All right, and I'm just sharing your website here. Thank you. Yeah, and your persons can order their copy by clicking here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, available now. It says a ghoulish, you know how long I haven't heard that word ghoul. A ghoulish cold-blooded <laughs> murder is committed by a sleepy little elf called Nevada, Nevada, an isolated town midway between Reno and Salt Lake City. It seems lost a hundred miles from nowhere. Way out in the great American desert, the suspects keep piling up. That's why everybody had a hand in it. Seems everyone in Elko had a hand in it. <laughs> yes, and with your background in being a police officer, it would be very, very helpful to pull a mystery murder together. Yes, because I think you would have seen it all, Bob. Oh, my goodness. You would have seen and heard it all. <laughs> this is nice. This is nice. And let's see this, you have a book giveaway or some sort of giveaway here on your website. Let's have a look at it. Book and neck gator giveaway. Right, okay. that's uh, you know, a little, little face thing for these days and it has okay. old but not forgotten written on the face plate. <laughs> cool. I'm not too sure that's, there it is. Yes. I'm not sure that's one anybody's going to want or not, but that's the promo came up with that. Yeah, that's okay. Pick a color and then you put it on. Well, we don't know how long this virus is going to be around and we have to be safe and protect ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it will be something useful. Yeah. At some point in time or right now, we don't know for how long. And for persons who want to contact you, they can use the contact us button. Yes. And reach you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or they can email you at rj at rjwaters-author.com or contact you at this number here to yeah. Ned Barnett. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Or ned at barnettmarcom.com. Yeah, Ned, uh, ned does the uh, yes. prompt items. Yes. Okay, and let's look at the page with interviews. So you have done a couple of other interviews as well. I do. Yeah. And let's come back to the home page. So any final words for you, Bob? Any final words before we go? I uh, just thank you very much. I've enjoyed this probably as much or better than any of the other interviews. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. A lot of persons have said that to me and I try to maintain that. You know, it's just my natural way. I don't, I just do me. Yeah, and make people as comfortable as possible. Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So I, uh, and uh, I just thank you. Yes, and I thank you for the work that you have done as a police officer and for contributing your creative mind now into your book by using what you have done in the past. And a lot of people, you know, like I say to people, there's a book in everyone. There is a book in everyone. And we have a story to tell. And when we leave this earth, we want to be able to share our life, share our story. Whatever we have gone through may be able to impact somebody else who is going through that same thing and it may be your book that they pick up on to help them. So it is our responsibility, Bob, to tell our stories in the form of a book and get it out there. Whether it makes money or not is not the point. It is to touch someone's life. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to go along with that completely. Yes. Thank you so much, Bob. And all the best to you. All the best in your promotions and all your, the other books that's coming up, I'm sure, because I know you have more in you and I expect to hear more from you and for you to come back on my show and tell me all about those other books. Okay, I'd love to do that. Yes, anytime you're ready. You take care and thank you for being on Between the Lines. Thank you again.